Now is a time where digital minimalism is more important than ever. With ever-changing headlines and a lack of social connection, we're beginning to rely on our phones more and more. Even for me, someone who used to pride themselves on their digital minimalism has seen their screen time double in the last month. When you're stuck at home, it's easy to feel disconnected and lose yourself to waiting for that next Snapchat message or YouTube video. That's why over the past month, I've been working on ways to implement digital minimalism into my social media use. The first tip is to schedule streaming. During the first week of being stuck at home, I was pretty excited with all my free time and I indulged in a lot of YouTube. However, after that first week, I realized that there's only so much good content out there. Everyone can define what their own definition of good content is, but I realized that the creators I truly love only post so often, and if I'm watching YouTube all the time, I'm going to exhaust that supply of fresh content before they can replenish it. That's why I decided to start scheduling my time for watching YouTube. Scheduling makes this sound complicated, but it's not. Really, all I do is every three or four days, I pick an evening where I set aside an hour or two to sit down and catch up on all of my subscriptions. If I visit the YouTube website between then and I find something interesting, I add it to my watch list. And then after those three or four days, I sit down and I go through my watch list and I watch everything at once. This does two things for me. One, it keeps me from getting distracted. When I know that I'm going to be watching videos in the future, I'd rather save a good video to be watched in the future when I can truly enjoy it, instead of right now when I'm looking for a quick distraction from actual work. The second thing is this keeps me intentional with what I'm viewing. When I do my scheduled watch time, I like to watch on my TV. This keeps me from reading the comments section or getting distracted by other tabs. Because of that, I'm very intentional with the videos I choose because I know I will have to sit through a 10 or 15 or 20 minute video without distracting myself. You're probably wondering how I'm able to maintain the discipline to open the YouTube website and not watch anything for a few days until my scheduled watch time. The secret is that I don't. I have a Chrome extension called Stay Focused. What this does is it will set a time limit for blocked sites. And after that time limit expires, you're no longer allowed to visit that site for that day. I have my timer set at 25 minutes and that is the total amount of time I am allowed to spend on sites like Pinterest, Reddit, Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube in a certain day. I've used other extensions in the past that only block the website. However, that can be really annoying because while it is easy to get distracted on those websites, there is very valuable information. The timer keeps me very diligent with what I'm doing on the site and makes sure that I exit the site as soon as possible without getting distracted so that my timer does not run out for the day. I know some people worry about this one and I used to also and that is unfollowing people. I've had my YouTube and my Instagram both since 2013. Over the past seven years, I have been building up massive lists of people that I follow. Not only is this physically impossible for the human brain to remember all those people and recognize all of them, it's literally impossible for me to find all of the time to consume all of those people's content. So what I've been doing recently is I've been unfollowing a lot of people. YouTube can be divided into two segments. There are the creators that I watch every single week because they provide me inspiration, motivation, and education. And then there are the creators that I don't watch every week and I'm subscribed to maybe because I found one cool video of theirs or because I just wanted to remember their channel. I think that everyone I'm subscribed to makes fantastic content and I wish I could consume all of it. However, I'm subscribed to so many people that it becomes really tedious to try to watch all the videos and I don't think that I really should be subscribed to someone if I'm not actually watching their content. I've been unsubscribing from a lot of people. I kept the people that I watch consistently. However, the creators that I don't watch consistently, I've saved them in a folder in my bookmarks bar. The reason I do this is because I want to remember their names because they're obviously doing something interesting. However, I don't watch them enough to justify a subscription. I do the same thing for Instagram, except I have a few more categories. Instagram is split up into three segments. There's the friends and family section, which is all of my friends and my family members and people that I know in real life. The second segment is creators. This includes photographers and filmmakers and musicians and people that bring me inspiration. And the third one is just kind of miscellaneous. I obviously follow a lot of people from high school on Instagram, but since I've recently graduated high school, I think it's finally time to let go of some of them. I know that this can seem really offensive and people do feel obligated to follow other people because they did something like go to high school together or because they used to be friends several years ago. This was definitely the case for me up until now. 
I realized that most of these people are not posting any content that is meaningful in any way to my life, so therefore I shouldn't feel obligated to follow them. I also followed a lot of random people and hashtags, and I decided to unfollow those because they were mostly cluttering my feed with content that I did not recognize. I was also following some brands, and I decided to unfollow every single corporate entity or brand on Instagram because Instagram has enough ads already, and I don't want to voluntarily subject myself to more. I also unfollowed anything that was reporting on the news. I didn't follow many news organizations to start with, but anything related to politics or the news or the global situation, I decided to unfollow because whether I want to or not, I hear that information all the time and see it all over the internet and decided I did not want that to clutter my social media space. There were some accounts that I followed just because I knew that people could see underneath the bio who, the, who was following it out of their friends. And I guess for some reason I was hoping it would say that I followed them and somehow that would give me some kind of credibility. I don't know why I did that, but I unfollowed all of those accounts because social media is not about flexing your interests on other people. It's about finding content that you actually enjoy and interacting with it. Because the algorithms control almost everything, it is very easy to follow a lot of people without realizing it. But luckily last week, I discovered that Instagram has this feature that will show you the accounts that you interact with the least. This list will show you the 50 least interacted with accounts, and I would recommend going through this list and unfollowing just about everything three or four times. Also, since I'm going to university next year, I do follow a few admitted students' accounts, and I just want to say to everyone who I followed from those accounts, I put those people in the category of friends. So if you have anything related to HPU or HPU24 in your bio, I will not unfollow you. And finally, the tip that everyone hates when I suggest take a break. No matter what you do, no matter what kind of importance you place on social media, I guarantee you that after taking a few weeks or a month away from it, you will realize that it has absolutely no importance in your life whatsoever. I have done a social media detox and I definitely need to do one again in the future given my new social media habits. Speaking from experience, I know that you will come up with certain justifications and explanations and excuses as to why you need to keep social media. However, also speaking from experience, I guarantee you that all of those problems will work themselves out in the course of your detox. I know that this often sounds like a very unattractive option because you'll be forced to face the stark reality that you fill so much of your time with social media. Given the increased anxiety all over the world, I think everyone is definitely a lot more active on social media. That can be good, but it also can have detrimental effects. This can sound like an extreme option, and if you're not entirely comfortable with it, I would suggest trying the other tips first. However, I can assure you, if you do decide to take a detox, it is well worth it, and you will come back with a new perspective on social media, and a new perspective on what you actually need to follow and what you don't need to follow. Social media can be a wonderful tool or a horrible addiction. I think for a lot of us, it is starting to lean toward the addiction side, but hopefully you can use some of these tips and make it a little more useful for you. Just remember that social media is designed to take up as much of your attention as possible. These tips I'm suggesting are not miracles. They will take some effort and discipline on your part. Hopefully we can all take a step back and look at the principles of minimalism and see how they apply to social media in order to truly find the content we enjoy. As long as you stay disciplined during your implementation of these tips, I believe that you will be able to declutter your digital space and find the content that you truly enjoy. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week.